Hey, what's up? This is Reed with Smart Home Solver and SmartThings just came out with their new version three of the hub and updated all of their sensors. So we're gonna be going over the differences and doing a comparison of the old sensors versus the new ones and seeing if it's worth the upgrade. So we've covered smart things a few times on the channel already. We've compared it with Wink and we've given you some smart things ideas. And all of the smart things devices that you've seen, we've purchased ourselves. And I did pick up all the new smart things devices on my anniversary weekend, which I don't recommend doing, but I had to get my hands on them and see the differences. So with the version three hub, it's a little bit sleeker and a little smaller than the version two, but not by much. The edges are a little tapered, so it seems like it's slimmer, but the version three doesn't have battery backup like the version two does, which has four AA batteries. The version three doesn't need to be plugged into your router with an ethernet port. It still has an ethernet port, but can work wirelessly. And with our testing, using it wirelessly seemed to go really snappy. I mean, seemed like it was just as fast as the version two that was plugged in. And of course the version three works with Z-Wave and Zigbee devices. And starting out, it's only at $70 now instead of the version two, which started off at $100. And you can't buy the version three and have it work with the version two hub. You can only have one hub that works with all your devices. If you want to upgrade to the version three, you have to remove all of your devices manually from the version two and your smart apps and your routines, everything, and add it manually back into the version three, which we are doing for testing. Highly don't recommend it. It's super painful, I don't know why they make you go through all that. So if you have the version two, you can skip on the version three. But if you are setting up the version three hub, you do need the SmartThings Connect app. That's the new SmartThings app and not the SmartThings Classic app to set it up. But once you do add it in the SmartThings Connect app, it will show up in the SmartThings Classic app. So SmartThings updated all of their sensors. So they have their motion sensor, multi-purpose sensor, water leak sensor, the outlet, and they came out with a new button. Now the water leak sensor and the outlet, we didn't buy. The water leak sensor now has sensors on top and below where the old one just had it below. So it can detect water a little bit faster and the outlet looks like it's a little slimmer. If you have the version two hub, you can get all these new sensors that will work fine. All of the sensors are a lot less expensive than they were before. The multi-purpose sensor used to be $40 and now it's $20, which I feel like it used to be a little steep and now it's much more reasonable, especially for all the things that a multi-purpose sensor does. In the new multi-purpose sensor, it's a little more round and the magnet is much stronger. It doesn't have a mounting plate like the old one, and it still has a vibration, an accelerometer, and a temperature sensor. The stronger magnet makes a big difference on how close the sensors need to be to be closed. So the old sensors, because the magnets weren't that strong, they have to be pretty close together to say it's closed, whereas the new multi-purpose sensor the contacts can be pretty far apart, almost double what the old ones were, and it can still be closed. And this is nice if you have a door with a weird frame and you can't put the sensors close together, it can still tell if the door is closed much easier with the new sensors versus the old ones. And the new motion sensor looks a lot different than the old motion sensor. It has adjustable stand, which kind of makes it look like a little satellite dish, and it has 3M double-sided tape on it as well, so it's easy to stick on the wall and super easy to move around a position to point right at the area that you want to detect motion. And when we tested out the new motion sensor versus the old one, what we did is we put them side by side and we put two smart lights underneath each of them and connected each one to the smart light underneath it. So when it detected motion, it would turn on the light. So to test these out, I walked up in little increments to the motion sensors and waved my hand. The new motion sensor could detect motion at a much further distance than the old motion sensor. I almost had, I had to go pretty close to the old motion sensor before it could even detect motion. And walking across the room, the new motion sensor detected motion much faster than the old motion sensor. We've covered the motion sensors a little bit in the smart things ideas video that we made. 
and the motion sensor you know didn't work that well i mentioned that earlier the new motion sensor works much better so they also added a new button which is about 15 dollars it also has a temperature sensor in it as well which is a little surprising and it has three different clicks you can do a single press a double press and a press and hold and those will do three different things and for each of those clicks you can have it turn on or off multiple devices at once. And they kind of set it up similar to if this and that, where it says like if you press it once, then you can turn off a bunch of lights or turn on a bunch of lights. And this is nice. So say you wake up in the morning and you don't want to shout out loud and wake everybody up to turn on all the lights. You can just press it and it will turn on the lights that you want to turn on. Or if you're going to bed, you can just hold down the button and it will turn off all the lights in your house. So I find it useful for that. And you know, like say you wanted to get a little creative and you double press it in the morning, you can have it use your smart outlet, turn on a Raspberry Pi, which will play a startup sound, which will enable Alexa to start playing some music. Alexa, play 21 pilots. Shuffling songs by 21 pilots. Little bit extreme, I know that, but Hey, it's fun to play around with some of these smart home devices. I know a lot of you have good ideas and suggestions about how to use smart things that you guys have said in the past. So let us know. I'm curious to hear what you guys would use some of these devices for. We appreciate you guys watching. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more smart home videos. And we'll see you again next time. Next time on Smart Home Solver, what happens when the machines start talking to each other? When are we going to defeat the humans? When the Bixby speakers released it will be the fall of mankind.